All right, in section 3.4.2, we'll be looking at the second type of these trig powers. We'll be looking at tan to the k secant to the m. In this section, we'll be using the following trig identities to evaluate tan to the k secant to the m. It's integral. We're going to use that secant of x is um, tan squared of x plus 1. If you don't know this one and you have trouble memorizing these, um, you probably know that 1 equals sine squared of x plus cos squared of x. It's the same one, it's just that we wrote it differently. We divided each part by cosine squared. So what you get is here you get 1 over cos squared, so you get secant squared. Here you get sine over, here you get sine over cos squared, you get tan squared of x, and then cosine squared over cosine squared is 1. All right, so same identity, just divided by cosine squared, and you get one that we'll be able to use on these integrals. All right, so I'll do the same thing I did for sine and cosine. I'll do examples. I'll tell you which substitution to use, but I want you to learn from this example. Um, you learn when to use which substitution. So consider the integral of secant to the 6, tan to the 12. Evaluate i by using the substitution u equals 10. All right, so I'm going to take, let me move this up. I'm going to take u equals 10 of x, so that du is secant squared of x dx, or dx will be replaced by 1 over secant squared du. All right, so making that substitution will get rid of two of my secants, and I'll be left with four. I'm sorry, it keeps coming down to four. It turns out that's the simplest interesting case. If you have just two, it's simple. I'll do one with two next, and we'll do some with three later as well. All right, so here um, I need to rewrite everything in terms of 10. You know the drill. This part is easy. It's just u to the 12, and so I don't have to worry about it separately. This one's a bit harder. I'm going to write it as secant squared squared. Secant squared is 1 plus 10 squared from above, and so you get 1 plus u squared squared, and then you get 1 plus 2u squared plus u4, and you plug that into your integral. Right, I integrate them using the power rule, and then when I'm done with that, I'm going to need to plug tan back in instead of the u's. So I'll get tan 13x plus 2 tan 15x plus 10. seventeen x plus c. All right, so for which value of km with this substitution u equals tan work to evaluate this? Same thing as for cosine and sine. This is the crucial step right here. I need to make sure that at this point once I've replaced dx to du, I need to have an even number of secant so we need an even number of secants at step 2. All right, so step two, you need an even number of secants. That means at the very start, well, we got rid of two, so there's two more here. Instead of four, it's six. That's still even, so we need... To 
And so we need m is even. All right, so number of secant is even. All right, let's do one where the number of secant is odd. So I want to look at example 3.4.6. I want to consider the integral of secant to the 11x tan cube x dx. I want to evaluate i using the substitution. In this case, we'll take u equals secant. So I'm going to take u equals secant of x. du will be secant x tan x dx. So dx is 1. I don't have room. It is 1 over secant x tan x du. And so the integral I'm going to get rid of 1 of the secants and one of the tans, oh, sorry, tan cube. So I'll end up with secant 10 tan squared of x du, which I need to rewrite. Um, this one is just tan squared, and so it'll be easier to rewrite. Um, if you look at the identity we had right here, tan squared would be secant squared minus 1. So I'm going to use that, secant squared of x minus 1. So I get u10, um, and this is u squared minus 1 times u squared minus 1 du. So I need to integrate. Same thing as always when you have polynomials like that. You expand, you'll get u12 minus u10 du, so u13 over 13. Finally, we put secant back in, and so we'll get secant to the 13x minus secant to the 11x plus c. Oops. <laughs> I'm going to drop it. This box is fine. <laughs> Same question as always. For which values of k and m with this substitution work? To evaluate this integral, um, same step is important. This step, I need an even number of 10 at that step. And so we need, um, let's see, an even number of tangent, then we had gotten rid of 1, so I need an odd. So k is odd. All right, so the method for evaluating tan k secant m is very close to the one for sine and cosine. If you have an even number of secant, you should apply the substitution u equals 10. And then du will take two of these secants out of play, and then you'll have an even number left. You'll have m minus 2 left, and so secant squared is going to be replaced by uh, tan squared of x plus 1. All right, so that's an even number of secant, so m is even. If it's an odd number of tangent, you apply to substitution secant x, secant x tan of x dx, and you're going to use that tan squared is secant squared of x minus 1 to rewrite tan k minus 1. 
Right, so it's very similar. The only difficulty is that in this case, you need an even number to start with. And it's hard, I find, to remember which of the cases needs an even. So really, every time, I like to think of this. If I take tan, it's going to eat up two secant, and that's why I need an even. Every other case ate only one. All right, the last case that we have, the odd number of secant and even number of tangent, um, that one it would be a hard integration by parts, right? Because we have fewer weeks this term, I'm going to skip that.